Okay, so this is a kind of work in progress video covering off where I've got to with putting more stories on Foundry, which I didn't expect I was going to do two days ago, but turns out I decided I would. Um, so here we find ourselves. Okay, so it's pretty standard implementation of Foundry and there's no magic to it. Um, the one really big innovation is going to be that we're using the custom system builder um, as the underlying system build uh, for the entire game. It's worked really well. Uh, pretty happy with it. It doesn't do everything. Like uh, if I had better scripting skills, I could probably get it to do a couple of additional things that would be really nifty, like punching back to the player if they wanted to add or remove dice or uh, allowing for pushes. But beyond that, it's pretty nice and more than enough for most players. Um, so I'm going to quickly go through how I've set it up. Um, and I'm going to cover off the modules in particular that I'm using. I use a pretty light list of modules. I know other people like Frank, Rattle Nash, um, big user of modules, knows them much better than I do, but uh, just beyond what I need. So what have I done? Um, so the manage modules uh, that I've used, I've used Dice So Nice because I just like the dice. I've used the dice tray, uh, which gives me this little iconography down here at the bottom so that I can just roll as many dice as I need to if I ever need to roll dice. Uh, quite nifty. I'm going to set up dice so nice so that when I roll sixes and ones I get different visual effects which will be a nice touch as well which you can do in dice so nice. Um, there's a couple of additional ones. I like pings a lot to help people just know where we are on the map. <coughs> Um, I've allowed reverse initiative order, although I suspect I don't need it because I'm actually using the Year Zero Combat um, extension. Uh, so this Year Zero Engine Combat creates an initiative deck, uh, deals with initiative, and also does reverse initiative really nicely done. Uh, and it can be pointed for your interest at any of the key system modules that are already out there for things like Verse and or Alien, uh, and do that and point at that, or it just generates its own, which is what I'm doing right now. I've also put in the calendar just so that I can have a calendar, which I quite like, so I can pop that up, and obviously June 1944 is where we are. I can also close it. Um, beyond that, not many modules. Obviously, the as I said, the big E is the custom system uh, module, so let's talk a little bit about that. All right, so the custom system module uh, allows you to basically craft up your own sheet. It's a pretty recent release. Uh, it allows you to um, manipulate the sheet using a kind of WYSIWYG interface, which is really nice. Uh, and I'll quickly run through what that looks like. It's built using two components. Uh, the first of those components is a template. So you create a template for the sheet, and then obviously you apply that template to the actors, uh, so the players. And you can build... As you can imagine, you could build a simplified uh, NPC template or even a vehicle NPC, uh, sorry, a vehicle template if you wanted to. Um, for now, I've just done the War Stories player sheet. This is kind of what it looks like. I'll just make it bigger so it's not so ugly. Uh, so you've got these range of attributes. Um, as you can see, I've set it up with just basically built straight off the character sheet in the back of the book. Um, I've got... Uh, I can configure the sheet display so I can choose how big it will present and how big the image is. Now, I'm not a big fan of images, so I've kept that pretty small. Um, you can craft up things like hidden attributes and the attribute bars that will appear on top of tokens. I've been playing with them, but like I said, not a scripter. So, and do the players really need it? Probably not. Um, then what I've done is I've basically used the table construction to put... Things like Lucky Strikes and Fubars in. So these things are counters. They will count one and two, and I'll show you that on the sheet. Uh, it's got counters. It's got text boxes. It's got check boxes. Um, it's got this thing called panels. Uh, now I've created a tab panel. So what that means is I can go from panel to panel, uh, and the player will see this view as well when they have their character sheet. So I've put all the skills in. Um, you can create formulas based off the labels, so these are all known as labels, uh, and when you click on a label, you'll get uh, this label roll message, which is exactly what I'm passing to the chat screen, and what it, this one in particular is doing is it's adding the strength score that I have uh, to my close combat score, so if I had three in there, that would be four dice, 
Then it's also taking on board what my current wound impact is. So is it minus one, minus two, or minus three? And then finally, I've just put in a roll modifier to capture everything else. And that can go two minuses as well as pluses. So I can reduce the number of dice or increase the number of dice. Um, it's also counting whether I roll ones or sixes. Now, one of the limitations in a non-scripting universe that I live in is I can't get it to show me both what I got in ones and what I got in sixes. So it's going to tell me how many successes I got and the players will just keep an eye on the ones and they will know that. And when it comes to pushing, they'll just basically roll the same thing, but they'll obviously reduce the roll modifier uh, by the number of ones and sixes they've already rolled, which will give them the new dice. So for instance, an example would be uh, I rolled eight dice, I got a six and a one, so I then modify the roll down by two. So I'm only going to roll six dice in the next roll, keeping that one and that six. It's kind of the logic that I'm getting them to apply. It should work really well. Uh, let me just cancel out of that. Um, it took me about eight hours to put all of this together. Maybe a little bit less. Nah, probably eight hours. So what I've done, uh, I've gone with a pretty broad narrative aesthetic. I, I know that, um, and I got this idea, free admission from Amero, and Amero um, was <coughs> already doing this work, uh, so I went and uh, basically copied his ideas. Um, anyway, uh, Amero has gone for a much lighter, more item-driven model, and I've gone for a more narrative model. I just want people to be able to see everything. So you can see in here what I've done, I've put in uh, the weapon stats running across the top and then I've just dumped in some of the combat modifiers. These don't calculate, they're just to tell the players and remind them of how that works. I put talents and specializations in, so what that'll look like is it'll show talents and specialization descriptions as well as their names. Uh, you can just dump items in the item containers and then there's a series of notes where players just write their notes. So no more than that. Uh, it should work really well. So let's have a look at what it looks like for a sheet. Um, let me show you that. All right, so this is uh, my very favorite uh, Russian soldier, uh, Tust. <laughs> no, only kidding. So as you can see, uh, exactly what I was talking about before. So you hover over this, I can reduce that or increase it. Goes from minus three to zero, and I set that in as parameters. I can also just checkbox these. I would still need to manually manipulate this, which is exactly what I'm going to do, and say that's now at minus three dice. So I've got eight modifiers, so I'll just... By the way, you can uh, just type in if you want. Uh, so if I roll strength, I should roll no dice. No dice are rolled. Yay! If I roll calisthenics, I should roll two dice. Ta-da! Now, if I... Go back here and I, oh, sorry, improve my stats. I should roll four dice. Ta-da! And now if I go to my roll modifier and I go, I'm going to take two of those dice back again because I'm, I don't know, under fire, can't think of whatever. Uh, and then I roll calisthenics again. Back to two dice. There you go. It's as simple as that. That's how easy it is. Pretty simple. Um... So it's not auto-calculating a lot. Like, that's all I needed. Uh, that gives the players enough to work with. And then read my comments about the gun. They can literally just put each gun in and they can create a new one, uh, like so. Quite a nifty little thing. They can just fill those in. Uh, more than enough to get by with. Uh, same story for talents. I've created this as um, a rich text field, which is a bit bulkier, but I just like the idea. So this is my... Very auspicious talent. Now, um, this, I once again, I am not auto-calculating off the back of this. So if the player wanted to deploy a talent to a particular activity, they would actually need to go in and do that roll modifier. So if it was adding plus one dice to an activity like the one I just rolled, I reduce that from minus two to minus one because I'm getting the plus one dice from the talent. And then I would hit the skill that I wanted to hit. So it could be close combat. And I would get that, three, two. And this is uh, what it's calculating. So see what I mean by it's just telling me what my successes are, right? So I got two successes, yay. And I got no ones, 
if I roll a lot of dice, which we'll do just for fun and giggles, um, I should get some ones in there. Nope. Okay. Do it again. Huzzah. I think there were some ones in there. I get a one. And you can see the one is red lit and the six is a green lit. Like I said, I'm going to um, do the dice so nice thing. So the sixes will do something flashy and the ones will do something horrible and dark and the players will know what they've rolled um, off the back of that. Okay, so the sheet itself is really simple and easy to do. Happy to export it. I just got to work out how I can share this stuff around. I'm not quite sure. Um, the tool itself actually comes with an export templates JSON. Now I've installed some of the previous templates and none of them are working. So I haven't tested that yet, but I'm very happy to um, put the template uh, somewhere. I'll probably share it with the original author of the custom system builder and hopefully they will then um, publish it and you'll be able to get access to it that way. Um, I might also be able to share it directly. Anyway, should work if it works. Otherwise, you'll have to do exactly what I've just done and build the whole thing. Sorry about that. Uh, so then the only other thing I wanted to share was how I'm going to approach maps. Okay, this is the GM's map. Spoilers, do not look if you're a player. All right, so now if I drag, now I've turned, uh, let me just show you my configuration. <coughs> I got the background image, which is explicitly the Holdy map uh, GM map. In the lighting section, I've put the Fog of War image up as the player's map, and I've kind of made that pretty light. Now, I used a bit of Photoshop to resize the two images to make them exactly the same size, and I used Photoshop to rip the images directly out of the PDF. So these are straight out of the PDF, and then I've resized them in PowerPoint. Uh, sorry, in Photoshop, it took me four minutes, maybe, maybe five at a push. It wasn't very long. Anyway, you wouldn't want to do it like lots in advance, but you could do a couple of maps in advance and you'd be right to go. Five minutes work. And I'm sure there are other tools that would do just as good a job. Um, okay, so that means that when the players are exploring the map, they will see the player map. And as they explore it, it will unveil the GM map, which was my intention because I wanted to be able to sort of have them be surprised. All right, now I can set the token up. So there's a default token template. Haven't done it yet. We'll do it soon. But let's put... And the, my players have already been here, so let's put this guy in and let's turn on his uh, vision. So he's vision enabled. Let's give him six meters of vision. Uh, by the way, each square is roughly two meters in my thing. It's not for any other reason than that. Okay, so now if I move him around, what you'll see, actually, hold on, let me reset my. Let me reset my fog of war. Nice. Now, let's... Oh, damn it. Can't get to him. Okay, all right. I'll pull it in. Sorry about that, folks. I'm just going to turn this guy on. Uh, light, vision, boom. Six. All right. So now, he can't see anything but when he comes up here and exposes he can see that there are two artillery units there and if he comes this way that circle will be unveiled to be a machine gun point so i thought i was playing with it, it seemed pretty cute um you can always turn off fog of war pretty quickly if it's not working or if the players have worked it all out in advance um suggest you do both and have a bit of a go it's um good fun um that's about it. And oh yeah, so this is what pings do. So I can literally point at the map and go over here. The cute thing is because I'm the GM, I get one view of the map until the players remove the fog of war. They don't see what I can see, which means I'm always aware of where the sniper is and I don't have to remember or where the machine gunist is and I don't have to remember and the players um, explore and discover that as they travel through it. So I was thinking of using that. Uh, one last thing, just because I've got them here, I'm going to put him into the combat. So you can see I'm starting a combat now and I'm going to drop and drag another guy over here. If it'll let me. Yeah, it's just very hard to see against the white background. My fault. 
Okay, they're both there. Now, so this is what the Year Zero Combat Engine thing is doing. I can draw cards and then the messages pop up and they're really nice, right? Like you get this lovely little, I got a D10, I got a four, and it reorders the combat. So really worth doing and, and actually really lovely. And if I want to reset the initiative, I can just do that and it'll happily do it. And then I can draw again. Um, and if I want to reset again, I'll just see if I can get it to... Yep, and then it reorders automatically, which is quite nice. So every round, uh, you can do that, and I can reset the initiative deck so that all of the discard cards that have been used go back into the pile. Uh, I think that'll do for now. So I haven't been using this, but the custom system builder, and particularly Amero's work, which is far more advanced than my own, I am taking a slightly different path because I want a slightly different emphasis, but... Um, all props to Amero for what he's done so far. All right, great stuff. Thanks very much. That is the end. Uh, I will probably try and work out how to share the JSON. And once I've worked that out, I will put a note uh, underneath the video so that you can find out how I did it and hopefully access it.